How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, I've got three topics to cover. The first one is that this tiny Steam Deck update is heralding the release of something way bigger. Second on the list, a lot of people are saying we just got the reveal of the Steam Deck 2's chip, but I don't think that's the case. And third on the list, Emu Deck is taking a leap into hardware, but it doesn't seem to be going as well as they thought it would, and I'm gonna tell you why I think that is. So let's talk about this first news story. So right now, if you're in the beta channel, uh, you can update to 3.6, Point twelve. It's basically the latest version of SteamOS 3.6, which has been a very long time coming. I think they announced this way back in April or May of this year, and they've had it in the preview channel for a very long time now. It gives you a few good features, like if you have a 64 gigabyte model of the Steam Deck, you'll no longer run into this 3.6 issue that would corrupt your file system and force you to download the firmware to a USB stick, reinstall it, and hopefully recover all of the saves and everything like that that was lost. So that's a good fix for 64 gigabyte owners. For me, on the one terabyte limited edition OLED, there was an issue plaguing it that I've run into a lot lately, which is that if you go into sleep mode or restart your Steam Deck, the SD card would become unmounted and half your library would go missing, like all the games that were on your micro SD card wouldn't be in the installed category on SteamOS. And it's really annoying because all you have to do is pop this SD card out and pop it back in, but it's so flush with the bottom of the Steam Deck that having to do that over and over again was getting really annoying. The next issue they fixed is another one I've ran into super unfortunately this one really sucked my Steam Deck was at like 10% and I was about to go upstairs to grab the charger and bring it back down so I could keep playing Dead Rising 2 but then the Steam Deck forced an update from the beta channel and I was like oh crap I really hope this thing doesn't die and in the time I was able to run all the way upstairs and all the way downstairs so about two minutes the Steam Deck did go from 10% to zero it shut off during an update and I was terrified that I had bricked my Steam Deck thankfully nothing happened I just just turned it back on and it was on the like later version like the one that it was updating from and then I was able to do the update again while it was plugged in and everything went through fine on the display side they've improved VRR support for monitors I just gotta be real. Like I know this is the Steam Deck fanboy channel. I never really use my Steam Deck docked unless I'm installing something. Like the last time I used it docked was about a week ago when I installed Silent Hill 2's Enhanced Edition because you need to do a lot of clicking. You need to do a lot of typing. I have a whole setup at my desk with the keyboard and mouse and monitor all through a USB-C hub. So I just pop that on. And I have it set up so that the Steam Deck screen goes inoperable when it's in desktop mode. So it just turns into a full desktop. For stuff like that, I like playing on the desktop, but like I don't play any games on the desktop because I have a bigger gaming PC that I use at a desktop. I don't need the Steam Deck to fulfill that purpose. But they fixed something I did notice, which is that when I unplugged the Steam Deck, even though it was at 90 hertz in the quick access menu, it was definitely not running at 90 hertz. It felt like around 30 FPS or 30 hertz. So they fixed that issue as well. That was easy to fix though. You would just reboot the Steam Deck and everything would go back to normal, but it's good that they fixed that for a beta release that most people are on because most people don't use the preview channel. So it's a good update. It fixes a lot of bugs. Thankfully, ones that I was running into have all been addressed, but the thing that people aren't really noticing here because they didn't categorize it right in the patch notes is that this is one of the first, if not the first release candidate updates that SteamOS 3.6 has gotten. So basically what that means is we won't have long to wait, hopefully, for the full release of SteamOS 3.6. I love these big like point updates, not the like three point updates where it goes like three point number point number. I like the ones that are like three point number because those are the ones that bring along big features. And SteamOS 3.6 is definitely bringing along a lot of big features, including stuff like better compatibility with Bluetooth headphones. So if you're an AirPods user, you're gonna notice a lot quicker connection times. You're also gonna notice a lot less latency, which is great. They're also updating Arch Linux for the Steam Deck, like the version of it that they're using, which is great. I've been using it for a little bit and it is just so much quicker. Like you don't have to wait that long for any folders to open anymore. You don't have to wait that long for web pages to load. Even though it's using the same hardware, everything is just a lot smoother than it was in 3.5, so that's great. The graphics driver is also getting upgraded, and unlike a lot of other handhelds, when the Steam Deck graphics driver gets upgraded, uh, every game basically gets a huge performance boost of five to 10 frames per second. So while we are pretty late in the Steam Deck life cycle at like two and a half years, and they've done a lot of graphics driver updates, I am hopeful that this one will, you know, actually improve performance in a lot of games. I tried to play Chaos Gate recently because I'm in a Warhammer mood. I ordered the introductory set. I'm gonna paint my space 
Marines. I'm so excited for that because you know Space Marine 2 is so good. Uh, Chaos Gate, even though Reddit and Proton DB say it runs perfectly, it does not run perfectly. If you put it at the lowest settings, you're going to see it dropping into the high 20s and low 20s very constantly. Like every time a turn happens or an animation happens, if you have the frame time graph up, you see it drop like it's a cliff that falls off. So I was pretty disappointed about that. I hope this new graphics driver, when it's released into the stable version of SteamOS 3.6, improves that game specifically because I was like addicted to it immediately. I'm playing it on my main desktop PC and it's very good. I don't think it really got nearly enough hype as it deserved. But there's a few games like that that are just like towing the line of being able to run at 30 FPS that I really hope are helped with this graphics driver when it's updated with SteamOS 3.6. And if you are someone who uses your Steam Deck docked with a TV, they've added on auto TV on, auto TV off, TV remote input features, which is cool. There's a bunch of stuff coming with 3.6 you can go just google 3.6 and you'll get the steam blog post that has everything listed out i think it's worth diving into because while some of the features aren't really worth talking about in a video like this there are some very granular updates that they're doing that are going to affect like very specific people who have very specific problems with the steam deck i'm glad valve is working on this and getting it closer to release candidate because that gets us one step closer to releasing steam os 3.0 to be installable on laptops and desktops i really want that. I know everyone said last time when I told you guys that I have a laptop with a 4090 in it that I'm going to be disappointed when it releases because it probably won't support Nvidia graphics cards. I'm holding out hope that because we've had to wait like over three years at this point because you know the Steam Deck was announced in around August or September of 2021. Uh, because of that I'm hoping that they're just waiting till all graphics cards will be supported before they release it and if they don't you're right I am going to be very disappointed but that bad OS that everyone uses like uh, my friend fan the deck rich over there and everyone else that's been starting to get Nvidia support very recently so hopefully valve is a little bit ahead of them I don't know because they don't talk to us but I'm just crossing my fingers I'm holding out hope because I really want a partition of SteamOS 3.0 on my laptop I don't want to deal with all the Windows BS like Space Marine 2 on my 4090 laptop for some reason never holds 60 FPS even when I put it into high performance plan and everything like that I feel like I'll get those two or three frames back that I'm missing, you know, because it hovers at 57 all the time just by using SteamOS without all that Windows bloat. I haven't really been able to try it out because, you know, you can't install SteamOS 3.0, but with SteamOS 3.6 coming out very soon, I hope that's like the wall that they have to cross to start fully working on SteamOS on other devices. I know that they're starting with the ROG Ally and then working their way up to other handhelds and hopefully everyone else's PCs. I don't like that decision. I talked about it in a couple videos. I think it's just like the wrong goal, right? Like you should just focus on getting it ready for everything and let it work on every device and when it's available versus supporting like very individual devices and working your way up because you can't really do that with laptops. There's a million of them. You can't do that with desktops. Everyone's got a different configuration with their desktop. So what I would prefer them to do is not focus on little milestones and just focus on getting to the big milestone we've been waiting almost three years for. I feel like that's a fair ask from a Steam Deck fan because this was announced announced with the Steam Deck. They said, we're making a new operating system, SteamOS 3.0. We want it to be available for every PC out there. And while they talked about it with The Verge recently, they said they're just starting to work on it, which really blows my mind because again, we're almost three years into the life cycle of the Steam Deck. I'm glad they're working on it. I just don't like the decision to even support the ROG Ally. That's competitor hardware. It is basically gotten free marketing from Microsoft since it was incepted because it uses Windows. Like it just feels kind of short-sighted and dumb to go after that hardware because again, it hasn't sold all that well. It sold well for Windows handhelds, but if, you, if we got numbers for the Steam Deck and we got raw numbers for the ROG Ally, I'd bet that on its face, it sold much worse than the Steam Deck and that would not account for all of the returns to Best Buy. Like go to your local Best Buy, head over to the ROG Ally section, like listen for the loud fan because that thing is always running on the kiosk at Best Buy and look in the little display case. There's at least seven to 10 open box deal ROG Allies just sitting there and no one's buying them. So if someone bought it in the first place and then returned it, that really wouldn't affect the sales data. Like they'd still probably count the sale in the first place towards the overall sales of the ROG Ally. So yeah, supporting that thing with SteamOS, 
I don't know. I, I don't support that decision really at all. So yeah, SteamOS 3.6.12, release candidate. What that signifies is that SteamOS 3.6 is coming soon. Hopefully it's by the end of the year and I'm crossing my fingers that around this the end of the year, you know, like that November area, we get some sort of hardware announcement of like a Steam machine or, you know, desktop hardware for the Steam Deck or at least some new peripherals, right? Like Sony, even though they put out way too expensive stuff like the Pulse Explorer and Pulse Elite headsets, the DualSense Edge, all of those things being around 100 and 70 to 200 dollars at least they're supporting their hardware with more accessories we haven't really gotten anything since the steam deck dock released and i feel like there's a lot more that valve could do in terms of like a steam controller their steam machine desktop that we've all been waiting for the vr headset like they have stuff cooking in the background it's just been a long time since they've announced any accessories or peripherals that are built to work with the steam deck so hopefully by october november range of this year we start getting some announcements of accessories we get some announcements related to releasing steam os for everybody you know the stuff we've all been waiting for for around two and a half to three years at this point anyway that brings us to the second news story here which is all about the amd z2 chip and all these articles saying like could this power the steam deck 2 no it's not going to power the steam deck 2 the specs are good it's coming out in early 2025 it's like a 30 percent bump over the graphics and processing performance of the z1 extreme i'm assuming that we'll get an rog ally x2 rog ally 2 whatever they're going to call it that uses this chip we'll probably get a beefed up version of the lenovo legion and go that uses this chip all of that's great but like assuming that that's going to be the chip that powers the steam deck 2 i think is like just willfully being ignorant because the steam deck's chip is a custom chip that valve worked with amd to create and the steam deck is the only device out there using it they have two versions of it the steam deck lcd uses one that's a little bit lower spec the steam deck oled got a little bit of a performance bump which is great that resulted in better frame rates and more consistent frame rates and better battery life i think valve has been very upfront about this in interviews with The Verge and other websites where they specifically said they want it to be a generational leap when they release a Steam Deck 2. So I see these comments all the time from people saying, is it too late to buy a Steam Deck? I don't think it's too late at all. Valve basically said, Valve has essentially said, they didn't put a date on it or anything, but the way they've talked about it is that the Steam Deck 2 is at least a few years off. They said that in 2024. So going by that logic, the Steam Deck 2 will probably come out at the earliest in 2026 and at the latest in 2026. 2027 or 2028 so knowing that knowing how cheap the steam deck is like you can get them refurbished you can get them used you can get the 64 gigabyte model for 399 dollars if you are curious about the steam deck i really don't think it's a bad time at all to finally pick one up it's gotten all the software updates you could ever need it runs much better than it did on day one and we do have a long time to wait for the steam deck too so if you've got a little bit of extra money laying around like you saw the 700 ps5 pro price and you were like laughing at that saying you're going to stick with your ps5 and you've been saving up a little bit of money on the side for the ps5 pro expecting it to cap out at like 600 bucks i would definitely put that money towards the steam deck oled right because it's just a great piece of hardware and it'll help you start building out your pc library for when you eventually jump over to pc gaming because you look at the cost difference of a ps5 pro and a gaming pc and realize it's only a few hundred bucks and you can build something that will be upgradable in the future which is awesome also we've got three holidays coming up we've got Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Valve does big sales for all three of those holidays. If you buy a Steam Deck right now, it says it'll get to you in three to five business days, which is much faster than it was at launch. You'll be ready to go for those sales where you can start building out your Steam Deck library of Steam games, building out that Steam library you can take to a future gaming PC, a Steam Deck 2, whatever. Like the best part about the Steam Deck ecosystem compared to something like an Xbox ecosystem or a PlayStation or Nintendo ecosystem is that you are basically guaranteed for forever to be able to take your games forward and they will work on pretty much any device you throw them at right like if you build a better gaming pc every game you're playing on your steam deck will de facto just work on that gaming pc if valve releases a steam deck 2 that builds on top of what we already have with the steam deck not only will those games run on that device they'll run much better and look better than they do on the current steam deck so if you want to build out a library that you're going to be able to take with you for the rest of your life or hopefully pass on to your kids playstation has no ability to continue on with backwards compatibility compatibility like yeah the ps4 will probably be supported by the ps6 and 7 right like we can guarantee that pretty much on its face but the consoles like the ps1 the ps2 and specifically the ps3 the psp the vita you're basically at the whim of sony deciding to actually make an emulator work for ps3 allegedly they're working on that but like we don't know when it comes to the ps1 ps2 psp classics those are just at the whim of sony deciding to release them and they've done it super piecemeal and offered them pretty much only through ps plus 
premium. You can buy them a la carte, but it's like a total crapshoot on whether or not it's going to give you the game you bought on the PS3 digitally when they release it on the PS5, which sucks. And the emulator sucks. It's terrible. Whether you use the PS1 emulator, the PSP emulator, or the PS2 emulator, the emulator is just garbage. It doesn't look good. It doesn't have good frame pacing. It doesn't have good frame rates overall. It's like a dismal way to play PS2 games. So if you buy a Steam Deck, you could just install EmuDeck for free and play all of these games phenomenally better than you can play them on the PS5, which is insane because the PS5 is as powerful as it is. Like Sony half asses the hell out of that stuff. So yeah, if you're one of those people in the comments that are always like, is it too late to buy a Steam Deck? Not only is it not too late to buy a Steam Deck, there has never been a better time to buy the Steam Deck. And when it comes to the Z2, the reason I'm excited about that is because it's going to be a look into the baseline performance, like the minimum performance we can expect with the Steam Deck 2 because Valve is waiting for a better chip than that. They're not going to use a Z line chip. They're going to make their own custom chip with AMD again. And hopefully it outperforms not only the Z2 extreme, but the Z3 extreme as well. Like they are very poised to come out with another console, handheld, PC, whatever you want to call it, that will just be de facto the best option for playing Steam games. And I'm very excited for that. Anyway, speaking of Emudeck, that brings us to the third topic of today's video, which is that they are making the jump into hardware, but it's not really going as well as they thought and while the answer doesn't really seem super obvious on the surface I think it's pretty clear why people aren't adopting this but let's just talk about what the hardware is so they basically launched an Indiegogo campaign with a really cool looking Dreamcast style box that has multiple configurations and multiple different price points and essentially what they want it to do is ship with Bazite OS and be a little game console that can emulate pretty much any game you want or even play your Steam games because with Bazite it's basically like a fan-made version of Steam OS. I know that's like a reductive way to say it, but like for a layman or just someone who's not super tech savvy like me, when you look at it, it looks like Steam OS and it runs like Steam OS. So we're going to call it, uh, you know, a fan made Steam OS. So with this console, not only will it come with Bazite, which is effectively a Steam OS overlay for the console, which is great. It'll also come with uh, Emudeck pre-installed. So you'll be able to emulate pretty much every console going up to the PS4 now, which is sweet. And it'll give you a way to plug in multiple controllers from different generations. It'll just take the PC-ness out of being a gaming PC in the same way that the Steam Deck does, which is why I don't think people are really chosen for this for a few reasons. The first one being it's really just doing the same thing as the Steam Deck, but a little, I don't want to say worse because I love Emu Deck and I love those people, but it is doing the same thing as the Steam Deck, but a little bit worse. Like, yes, you are going to get better performance, but that doesn't really matter because the Steam Deck already emulates every console going up to the 360 and PS3 extremely well. You are going to get better performance with Steam games, but like if you want to do that, you should just buy a real gaming PC and build it yourself because you're probably going to save money in the long run and it's missing the screen. So it loses the best part about the Steam Deck, which is you can dock it to your TV and play your emulated games or your Steam games on the TV if you don't have a bigger gaming PC to do that. But then when you're done doing that, you can unplug it and take it on the go and play wherever you are in the world. And as long as you have a battery bank, you're going to be good for hours to come. So it's like... I love the concept. I want Valve to do it because it'll ship with SteamOS 3.0. That will definitely be a supplementary device to my Steam Deck. It'll plug into my TV and everything like that. But I can kind of see why this thing isn't catching on the way that they initially thought it would. It's basically like coming to the fruit market with more fruit. Like everyone's already there selling fruit and you're just bringing more fruit. You should bring like vegetables or something to give people something different. And I don't think they really can because they don't have the official release of SteamOS 3.0. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.